All right, class, so this is a conversion factors video. Um, I had some questions about you know conversion factors, and I think that in a problem like this, where this is a dilution problem, which we're, we'll talk about as well, but um, there's some, some weird conversions that I wanna talk about you know, for sure. And I think what we're, what we're looking at is we're seeing something like this. 525 milliliters of a 1,688 micromolar and this micromolar, I think that's what we're going to be, you know, sort of confused by, uh, aqueous copper to fluoride solution. So what do we do with this micromolar thing? That gets into conversion factors, so I want to talk about that first, um, and then we'll do this problem. So before we do this problem, I want to talk about this table. This table is, uh, it sucks, basically. It's its not very useful, it's confusing, um, you know, I'm, I'm, not able to get that much information out of this, even though I know what it's trying to tell me, it doesn't really do a good job of telling me that. So let's talk about this table, let's talk about how we can get some useful information out of this. And the way that I've sort of re, you know, done this is made my own little table of common conversion factors. And this way of looking at it, this way of thinking about it, this is what I do, and I think it's, it's easier for us to sort of, you know, make sense of, and it's easy for us to actually utilize these conversion factors properly so that we get the right answers, right? Because that's what we're sort of looking for. Um, so this whole idea of 10 to the minus third milli, uh, 10 to the third kilo, you know, what that really means essentially is, I think, encapsulated over here. One gram equals 1,000 milligrams. The whole little milli prefix, that's gonna mean that it's, you know, a milligram is smaller, essentially saying it's a thousand times smaller than a gram. In other words, one gram will be a thousand milligrams. Same thing for kilo. Kilo is bigger, it's 10 to the third. So one kilogram is gonna be 1,000 grams. So really, if you have a good understanding of, of this table over here and working with this type of table, you can just sort of throw this away. Like we don't, we don't really need this. Um, you know, this isn't really gonna, gonna help us very much. So let's, let's just focus on this little table that I've made and let's do some examples. So let's say that we had um, you know, 0 0.0365 grams of something and I wanted to convert that into milligrams. The way I would, I would use this table is then I would say, well, okay, 1,000 milligrams is to one gram and I can do this calculation I can find that this would equal 36.5 milligrams, right? I've, I've canceled out my units of grams and I get this 36.5 milligrams. I can do the same type of thing for liters and milliliters. That's gonna be another very common one that we're gonna run into. So let's say that I had, you know, uh, three or yeah, 365 uh, liters. So now I've got 365 liters and I wanna convert that to milliliters. Again, I'll use this conversion factor where 1,000 milliliters, I'm gonna put milliliters on the top because I wanna cancel out that units of liters. So this is gonna equal 365,000 milliliters, a lot of milliliters. Uh, you know, that's how we're sort of supposed to use these conversion factors. Um, at the bottom here, I've put meters and millimeters. So we've, we've got a pretty good sense of what a meter is. It's about, you know, a yard. Uh, and that's a thousand millimeters, right? We know what millimeters are, they're very small. A thousand of those will equal to a meter. Likewise, a thousand meters is gonna be a kilometer. And again, we've got a general sense of a kilometer. It's pretty far, right? It's farther than we wanna run. All right, let's get back to this dilution problem. And I'm gonna show you how I sort of put this, you know, these conversion factors into practice. So here I've got micromolar. So we, we've got to sort of go through the idea of what a micromolar, you know, what that conversion is gonna be. Um, so what I would, I would sort of start with, maybe we'll, we'll write it right here, is that one molar is gonna equal 1,000 millimolar. So that milli, you know, prefix, so if I've got a one molar solution, that would be, in other words, a thousand millimolar. And I can take that one step further and say one millimolar is going to equal 1,000 micromolar. So that's how this micromolar is going to be sort of taken into account. So we're going to need to do a lot of little conversions here. And, and the cleaner you are about this, the more, you know, um, deliberate you are, the, the better results you're going to get. So let's be as deliberate as possible. 
So this says I must prepare this solution, 525 milliliters of this aqueous copper two fluoride solution. And I'm going to do this by starting with this sort of 0 0.00326 molar stock solution. So that's my stock solution. Um, I'm gonna take that stock solution and then make my solution, you know, my new solution out of that. So the question that I would ask myself, number one, is how many moles of copper fluoride do I need in my final solution? Now, you can do this problem with the M1V1 equals M2V2 equation, uh, but you guys know how I feel about that. I think it's a, a, a cheap trick, and I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to uh, show you how to do it that way because it's just not a really useful thing for you. Okay, so this is my first question. How many moles of copper fluoride do I need in my final solution? This is my final solution up here. So if I wanna figure out how many moles I'm gonna need in that, I'm gonna to need to combine the volume and I'm gonna to need to combine the molarity in such a way that will sort of lead me to that answer of moles. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this 1,688 micromolar back into just units of molarity. I think that's the easiest way to do this problem. So I'm gonna take 1688 micromolar and I'm gonna use my conversion factors. I'm gonna say, well, I know that this micromolar thing means that one millimolar would be 1,000 micromolar. And I can do that calculation. I can say, well, if I take this number divided by 1,000, I get 1 1.688 millimolar, right? And it's really important that we're writing our units here. Let's take it the next step further. 1.688 millimolar times one molar over 1,000 millimolar, right? It's keeping all these small m's, big m's, micro m's, all straight is, is obviously challenging, leads me to 1.688 times 10 to the minus third molar, right? So now we're back in the unit that we're used to. It's just a very small number, very very dilute solution already um, that, we're, that we're looking to make essentially. So 1.688 times 10 to the minus third molar. Now, if I want to find this, answer this question, I'm gonna take this value, right, because this is moles per liter, and I'm gonna to to multiply it by the number of liters. So if I've got 525 milliliters, I know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters, right? So this is just going back to my, my common conversion factors uh, table here. I can see that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. I'm gonna arrange it this way so that my units of milliliters will cancel out and I get a value of 0 0.525 liters. So now I know if I combine these two numbers in such a way that I can cancel out the units of liters, that will give me to my, my answer for the number of moles. So let's move this up just a little bit. 0 0.525 liters times 1.688 times 10 to the minus third moles over one liter, units of liters will cancel and I'll get to an answer of 8.862 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of copper fluoride. This is the number of moles of copper fluoride that I'll need in my final solution. So then question number two that we would ask is how do I get 8.8 six two times 10 to the minus fourth moles of copper fluoride from my stock solution. Okay, so this really question is really asking the volume of the stock solution that you're gonna need in order to make this, this final you know solution. So I'm gonna take this 8.862 times 10 to the minus fourth moles, and I'm gonna multiply that by, again, sort of a conversion factor between moles and liters here. So this is my molarity of my stock solution, and again, this is gonna be 0 0.00326 moles per liter, but I can sort of flip that over and say, well, in every one liter, there's 0 0.00326 moles. My units of moles will cancel, and if I do this calculation, I end up with 0 0.272 liters, right? So this you know, this calculation here gives me two point, or 
0.272 liters of stock solution. And again, let's just sort of reiterate what this means. This is the volume of stock solution that would contain this number of moles of copper fluoride. And the reason we, we know that we want this number of moles of copper fluoride is because that's the number of moles in my final solution, right? So this is my number of liters. And then lastly, just being very deliberate here, converting this liters back into milliliters. 1,000 milliliters over one liter, again, just using my conversion factor, equals 272 milliliters. And that is my final answer, right? So that's what I would put in up here. All right, hope that helps.